Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well, and who we learn this truth from through the power and spirit of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and salutations unto all the Akim, you brothers preaching the word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth, and Almighty Shalom to the hopeful elect, you sincere believers scattered wherever you may be. It's going to be uh, in transit just through the spirit, um, just going in on the return of Yahweh Shai and the coming destruction of Esau, Edom, and his society. Go ahead. And it, uh, so we're going to start with uh, Isaiah chapter 63, starting at verse 1. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This, this that is glorious in his apparel traveling in the greatness of his strength I that speak in righteousness mighty to save so just to break down verse 1 you know it said who is this that coming from Edom you know that uh, this is Yahweh Shai you know when he come back you know he's coming he's coming to fully destroy Edom you know and Edom just like Israel you know is a uh, people for a place you know so wherever uh the people of Edom is that's where that's where Edom is, you know. And then what it says, Basra, that's the chief place of uh of Esau. So you know that's the capital, you know. So what's the breadwinner or the, the money maker, you know, of Esau's kingdom? I mean the uh, Babylon the Great, also known as the United States. Uh I'm gonna read this again. Uh it says, uh traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, you know. So the Lord, you know, Yahweh Shah, when he comes back, he's coming, he said he's not going to meet thee as a man, you know. When uh, he come back to uh, get his revenge, you know, and I'm going to get that guy and get that real quick. This is Isaiah chapter 47. Isaiah chapter 47. Starting at verse... Yeah, yeah, Con, verse 3. It says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. You know, why would, why would, uh, Yahweh shall come back, you know, seeking, seeking revenge, you know? You know, because they, they, they pierced them, you know? I get that. You got, you got anything to say? Nah, I ain't trying to come. About to get this preset. Con, this is this is a uh, Revelation chapter one verse seven. It says, "Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him." All kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, Amen. And if I may say, he's coming with clouds, and that the clouds represent the chariots, as they call it, uh, UAPs or UFOs in the world today. And they're not <clears throat> unidentified, or at least you know, to the hopeful elect, the ones that the Lord have opened eyes and ears to hear to. And those those clouds are gonna be the chariot so he's coming with that host he's coming with the host and every eye shall see him because it's gonna be on a global scale the chariot is gonna go to the four corners of the earth and also Yahweh Shai he's not <laughs> what they say uh it's not gonna be a sight or a scene to miss because he's gonna come on that fathership yep. to where every eye is gonna see him even those that pierced him and that just proves that reincarnation is biblical and is real because those same ones that pierced Yahweh Shai are going to be back on the earth today when he returns. Yep. And he's coming to get them and uh, uh, release vengeance on them and also put the uh, top elites in slavery. Yep. So, you know, this is future prophecy and it's coming very soon. Come get two free, so just to back up with you, everything you just saying. Mm -hmm. Come on.
Okay, bit, yeah. Both of them in uh second of just thirteen. The first one going uh when he's talking about uh bringing some people gonna be in uh going into captivity, going into Esau, you know. And then the second going into the uh the fathership of Yahweh shot. So this is uh Second Edges chapter 13, starting at verse 12, and I'm going to go back up, talking about the UA, uh, UFO, but the fathership. Second Edges chapter 13, starting at verse 12. Afterwards, well, afterward, saw I, the same man, come down from the mountain and call unto him another piece of a multitude. So that same man was talking about Yahweh shot, and the piece of a multitude was talking about the elect. Verse 13, there, and there came much people unto him. Whereof some were glad, you know, the elect. Some were sorry, you know, the people, you know, that uh, that seen them come down, you know. And some of them were bound, and others, some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awake and said. So pretty much when he said some were bound, you know, that's talking about you know, the heathens, you know, because they're going into slavery also for what they did to us, you know. So I'm going to skip back up to verse, uh, skip back up to verse 3, talking about Yahweh Shah's fathership. So it says, and I, be, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard of his voice, like as the earth fell with when it filled with the fire. So when it's talking about the voice, it's talking about underneath, it's talking about the opening of the ship, you know. So pretty much it's talking about the opening of the ship, you know, the laser beam, you know, the concentrated fire, you know, burnt everything that it that pretty much it went towards, disintegrated everything. Verse 5, and after this I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of it's like a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So when it says uh the multitude of men that gathered together, that's talking about the uh the soldiers in the valley the valley of Jehoshaphat, or the valley of uh Yahweh Shapat, you know. The uh, World War Three, War, World War Three, you know, when all the uh, all the nations come from the four corners of the earth, you know, to meet in that one spot, you know, to battle, you know, and in the midst of them battling, battling, Yahweh Shah will come, you know, and all eyes will be on him, so that so they uh, end up fighting together. So verse six, by beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. But I would have seen the region of, or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. So that 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 great mountain is likened, well, that uh that father ship is likened to a mountain, you know, cause it's so so big, you know. And you could you could see a reference with that with it with uh Independence Day, you know, with Will Smith, you know. Uh, I could go further more, but. Uh, going to another precept. This is Revelation chapter 19, starting at verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in, righteous, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yeah, when it said, uh, when he sat upon that white horse, that white represents purity and horse represents power. So again, speaking of the chariot he's flying upon, and then also, it said the one that sat upon him was called faithful and true. 
I believe that links up right along with 2nd Ezra 15 when it says, write these words in paper for they are called faithful and true. And we know that Yahweh Shai is the uh, physical manifestation of the word, yep. of, of Yahweh's word. Huh. So the word is, is the word is Yahweh Shai. So that goes to show you that that's Yahweh Shai. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it tells you that in John 1, all the way down to 14, that the word is Yahweh Shai. So... And it said to, to make war and to judge, and that's that's what he's coming to do. Okay. All right, because the the Great World War Three is gonna be the end of, of the wars, and it's really Yahweh Bashim Yahushai's war. <laughs> and it's funny, it, it, it's three because um, if I'm not mistaken, three represents um, uh, understanding. I'm pretty sure, yeah. or wisdom. <laughs> and we know wisdom is Yahweh Shai. Okay. And, you know, so it's gonna be it's gonna be the uh, yeah the last war the war to end all wars. Say that. Ka. Ka ka. You can grab uh, if you can, bro. You can grab a uh, First Corinthians fifteen and twenty four. First Corinthians fifteen twenty four. And then there was also one in Psalm um, where it said he bowed the heavens. I know this one. I know it's talking about uh, rending the heavens. Maybe that one too. Kind of. Rend, render the heavens. I I got that for you. And you said fifteen twenty four. Come on. This I'll get the first one. This is First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, verse twenty four. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule and and all authority and power, for yeah. no, you got oh, it. you got it. Yeah. There's a little bit more. Con. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Yeah. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Yeah, you got it, bro. And, uh, you know, so that also coincides with the Psalms 110, um, how Yahweh Shai is gonna. Put all those under his feet, but basically take the rule and reign uh, over Esau, Edom, and his kingdom. That's basically he's coming to knock him off uh, the throne, so to speak. And yeah. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So that goes to show you right there that we're in the end because Esau, Edom, the so called white man, is in power. He's in rule. Right? Now, now even that is. Uh, being made manifest in these times, everything that is that is hid is being made manifest because we're in the latter end. So now, even your your average everyday, whether it be Edomite, Jake, heathen, they know that that uh, Esau's in rule, right? With all the all the um, conflict that's going on with the whole Kanye thing, and that goes to show you how hypocritical Esau is. <laughs> you know, he was just saying. Uh, uh, who was in power and then what happens as soon as you you know you, you flip the switch and you speak a little bit of truth they go to silence you so that goes to show you who's in power and they also cut up the bank accounts and who's, you know you just look you look at these major corporations and you you do some research and see who's in who's in the power seat who's in charge of these these companies and such it's the main one uh being amalek or the so-called uh can't even say that that you wish people if I'm not mistaken, called I think they call them umbrella uh, companies. Mm -hmm. You know, they be major companies that uh, that pretty much own a lot of smaller companies. You know, right? And all the yeah, all the ones that are you know that have that power is Esau. It's Esau Edom. He's a control. He's a rule. Job nine and twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, uh, where and who is he? Loosely paraphrasing. So. Huh. You know, the Lord had gave this man rule for for a moment, and as soon as his time to reign is done, and only the only Yahweh knows knows, knows that time, and Yahweh Shai is gonna get the green light from Yahweh on the right hand, and he's gonna come and, and, and wage war, deliver his elect, and set up the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's what's to come very very soon. Kind of got a precept. This is Psalms chapter 50. Damn, <laughs> Satan. I'm bro. There you go, man. What's up? All right, we back, man. We back. Uh, we 
go into what you just saying. There you go. Let's keep going to what you just saying. That was a song. Kind of, I'll just uh, go back with this precept. This is Psalms chapter 50, starting at verse 21, because the brother was just breaking down, you know, how uh, uh, Job 9 and 24, you know, uh, Esau, only reason he's in power because the Lord gave him it, you know. So this is uh, Psalms chapter 50, starting at verse 21. These things have, hast thou done, and I kept silence, you know. So uh, Esau been doing all these things, you know, bringing wickedness all across the world, you know, spreading it like a greenberry tree, you know. That's also in Psalms, you know. And the Lord said, I kept silence. It says, thou thought, thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as one as thyself, you know. So Esau thought, you know, the Lord was with him, you know, the whole time, you know, because he had Satan on his side. On his side. Yeah. You know, but it says, but I will reprove thee. You know, so the Lord going to uh, go correct him, you know. It says, no, it's like it says, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thy eyes, you know. So the Lord is going to set us in order, you know, while the same, simultaneously, you know, bringing them down, you know. Just like the brother was saying, uh, Second Edris, chapter 6, verse 9, you know. Uh, what other precept did you want me to get? Uh, you said render the heavens? Or you yeah. want to go into something else? Yeah, you can just end up with that one. Calm. Right, we're gonna end off with this verse, you know. How the Howard side's gonna come back, you know. Uh, you know, and, and get revenge, you know, on our adversaries. So this is I'll get on here. Like we gotta interrupt, interrupt you again, but we're just gonna end off with uh Isaiah chapter sixty four, starting at verse one. It says, Oh oh that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. So when it goes into rend, you know, that means to split apart, you know, or to tear, you know, the heavens. So when you think about it, you think about it physically, you know, the Lord is going to come, you know, he's going to come through the clouds, you know, he's going to come through uh, this atmosphere, you know. And then you look, look uh, so like you look at it symbolically, you know, the Lord is going to tear down this place, you know, it's going to tear down this whole place of uh, foundation, if you get what I'm saying. It says, verse 2, as when the as when the melting fire burneth, the fire causes the waters to boil, you, to make thy name known to thy enemies, so like in thy, thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence, you know. And when I think about that with, at the ending part, you know, I think of Revelation 18, you know. The nation standing afar, you know, seeing what what the Lord has done to Babylon the Great, you know, and then also it says when the melting bur fire burneth, you know, uh, what's that scripture in uh, what's that Malachi, you know, burneth as the oven, one. yeah, kind, will burn with fervent heat, you know. So I'm gonna end off, you know, I'm gonna end off with that. Okay. So with that, we're gonna, you know. And off with giving all praise, honor, and glory. By the Shem Yahweh Shai, 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 by the Shem Y